Hello, 7th sep and 8th graders. This is Mrs. Schubert. You can't see me because um, we are trying to do this in a different way because last time um, I did these notes, I knew it was um, hard for you to see because of the light from the windows in the room. So we're trying to just do it off of my laptop. Um, so you won't see me on this video, but um, I just want to explain a couple of things real quickly. I'm going to try to do this probably in two parts. And let me just explain this. You don't have to do this, of course, today. Um, if you are watching this and you want to do it, I think Wednesday, it's a really short assignment. You could do it on Wednesday. You can do it on Thursday. You can do it on Friday. You can do it whenever, as long as you get these, this work in. Um, Mr. Tashik has set the deadline for after Memorial Day to get your work done. Um, I'm not trying to make um, things real long for you and hard, but I did want to get through our book, and I did want you to finish your maps. And I also want to explain things because you do not get U.S. history again until you are a junior or senior. And so I wanted this to kind of, we want to still go through this. And what through the time that we're going through with this pandemic, it really sheds to light um, how important it is to know our history and know why we are Americans and what uh, has made us special. And um, I am praying for all of you, and I, I do pray that you have um, extra time with God through this time and that you spend extra time with him and, you know, call out to him. He knows how you're feeling. He knows the things that we go through, and he is it's no surprise to him what we're going through. He loves us and cares for us. Don't ever doubt that even when you're going through hard times. I've went through many hard times and I know sometimes it's hard to not think, you know, does God really still care about me or why is this happening to me? And sometimes we question things, but remember that God is a loving God. He cares about you. If you are his child, if you have already accepted Christ as your savior, um, you know, you are the apple of his eye and he is doing all things for your good. Think of stories like Joseph, um, where Joseph went through some really hard times growing up, and then look what God did for him at the end. Think of people like that in the Bible, and spend time reading your Bible and, and prayer, because that will help you. Um, so we are in a point, we're talking about the 1950s to 1990s. Get your um, timeline, if you haven't done that, there was a timeline, and then the list of presidents that we're going to go through. So I'm gonna probably do the timeline first and then we'll go back through and do the, the presents. Um, and you can watch both videos if you want at one time. I, am, I will try to do this as quickly as possible but still try to explain things to you. Sadly, from the 1950s, which was a good era, to the 1980s, we're gonna see that there was a decline of what we called Americanism. And remember that was given to you in your last um, chapter before um, these, I think it was chapter 20 where it talked about, or maybe even 19, where it talked about the difference between communism and Americanism. And Americanism is the belief that we should have, um, we should have freedoms. We should have individual freedoms. We should have personal property. We should have the freedom of religion. We should have the freedom of speech. We should have the freedom to express ourselves in assemblies. We should have the freedom to gather. Um, we talked about Bill of Rights. We should have all these freedoms, and communism is just the opposite. And in between Americanism and communism is what we call socialism. And sadly, what we're going to see is um, socialism has crept into our society, um, sadly, in a very sad way. Um, here is a quote from Alexander Sassensen, who was, remember, he was from Russia, and he denounced communism. He saw the evils of communism. He also was tortured, and he later wrote books about that, and he escaped to America, but sadly what he saw in America was how communism was creeping in, well, actually the beginning of communism, which is socialism, and he said this. He said this quote that I have here, evil makes its home in the individual human heart before it enters a political system. So we know that Unless we get rid of the evil, the sin in our lives, um, nothing else is going to happen. Not giving people more money, not giving them a free, um, 
free medical system, anything like that. Nothing's going to happen unless we get rid of the evil first. Atheist teachers in the West. So he's talking about the West is America. Sorry about that. That thing popped up. We'll dismiss that. Um, atheist teachers in the West are bringing up a younger generation in a spirit of hatred of their own society. And that is true. People, um, we, we've had generations now taught that what America and what the American ideas are wrong, um, that we have been, like, they talk about white supremacy and that we've been so wrong against different races, different nationalities. And in some sense, there is some people in our history that had done that, but the overall reaching effect of Americanism is not that at all. Americanism has tried to give freedom for all and has embraced that, so that is wrong. But that's what they've tried to do. They've had the spirit of hatred for Americanism. All attempts to find a way out of the plight of today's world are fruitless unless we redirect our consciousness in repentance to the creator of all. Do you see this part right here? This is so key. The only way that we can get out of the decline of socialism is a revival back to God. We are going to see that that is exactly what happened from the 1950s. We started plummeting down and then God miraculously, thankfully brought us out of that for a while in the 1980s and so that's what I'd like to show you so um, we'll get started here you have your timeline that says the 1950s to the 1990s and I'll just show you so we have Truman he was from um, 1945 to 1943 um, was his reign so he was a little bit part of the um, the 1950s then we have Eisenhower who is the 1953 to 1961. Now we talked about Truman last um, chapter and I talked a little bit about him. So we're gonna go with more with Eisenhower today. But so what happened in 1950s? This was blank on your sheet so you can write this down um, or at least write down three or four things. You don't have to write down everything but I'll just kind of explain things quickly. We had strong families. It was after World War II. World War II ended 1945. So it, from 1945 to 1950 and into the 1950s, we had strong families. There was a baby boom because parents um, wanted to have children. They loved children. They wanted to have strong families. There was a respect for Christianity. We talked about Billy Graham. They talked about the Elliots, Jim Elliot, and other missionaries that were going across the world. Um, Billy Graham came and started a revival amongst the people of returning back to God. And we also had respect for life. Um, capital punishment, if you broke a law where you killed a person, just like the Bible says in um, Genesis, I believe it's chapter 8, right after the flood. Um, if you, who has so sheddeth man's blood, his blood should be said, that is capital punishment. And there was nothing about abortion. People, that would be probably hideous in that time to think that you would kill your own baby. It was outlawed. It wasn't even thought of here in the United States. We had a strong economy because after World War II, the same after World War I, but World War II is when the jobs started because everybody looked to America to help them. We didn't have the war on our, on our country. We talked about this before. And so the strong economy was there. We had new technology. Um, black and white televisions came out. Some of you wrote your reports on that and when they were very good. Um, some of you wrote on cars, new cars came out. Everybody wanted cars and new appliances. So they've talked about the washing machine, the dryer, the um, pretty soon will be the microwaves and different things like that. So that gave, of course, new jobs for people. And then we talked, there was also the beginning of civil rights. This idea that um, black people should be treated, um, treated the same way as whites, which of course is very true, and Martin Luther King was the leader of that, and actually he was a very um, good leader of that. He had no idea of doing it in a rebellious, um, kind of, you know, uh, warlike way. He was trying to do it through um, gathering of people, talking about it, and doing demonstrations, but peaceful demonstrations. He was actually a very good leader of that, and he did help to institute that. So that was a very important time. The 50s were 
were actually a very good uh, decade for us. But then, and I, and I don't know if you have this, but sometimes I'll put this. So this is the presents are in blue, the baby boom, and this is the era that we're going through. That's kind of the eras that we are going through here, okay? So now we go to the 1960s, and who was president during that time? We have Kennedy, that we know he was a short pre time president, only for three years, because he was assassinated. His vice president, um, Lyndon B. Johnson, becomes president after him. And what happened in the 1960s? This is when we see the decline, and this is really sad, um, you guys, as we look at this, but we see that it was the rise of the progressive education. We talked about that last time, and that's why we did that other, um, video with Mrs. Gross, but John Dewey came in. He supported secular education. Madam Maureen O'Hare came in and she had a campaign against God where she tried to get atheism into the schools on the thrust of um, the difference between that there's freedom from religion of state. Um, but that is not what our first amendment means when it says that we have religion we have freedom of religion um, and that the state shouldn't be involved. It doesn't mean that the religion should not be in the state. It means the other way around, that the state, the government, should not tell you what religion you should listen to or do. And remember, way back we talked about how England, um, people that were from England, they didn't like that they were supposed to all have to belong to the same church. They wanted freedom of religion, and that's, remember, they went to Holland and they, that didn't work, so they decided to go to America, the pilgrims sailed to America to get freedom of religion. The Puritans did the same thing, even the Catholics did, and um, Baptists, other religions came here looking for freedom of religion. That is what that is talking about, the First Amendment, not that, that there should be no religion in the state. In fact, we know that our um, founding fathers believed that God should be the central part of building a government, building our schools, building anything um, in society because God should be the center of everything. But that has so sadly been corrupted because of atheism, because of secularism, because of modernism that we talked about, all of those philosophies coming in, and also socialism and communism. So what happened is prayer and scripture reading was banned in public schools. We talked about that last chapter. And we had the rise of Christian education. We talked about that with Mrs. Gross and how our school came <clears throat> to being, not necessarily in the 1960s, because school and um, prayer, ban prayer and scripture reading was banned in 1962, 1963. Um, 1965 was kind of the rise of the Christian education when it started and all the way through the 70s and 80s. So ours became a part in 1975. So what happened to America because we left God out of schools, then you leave the morality began to decline and you have, of course, the hippie generation, the long hair, um, sad to say, smoking, drugs, pot, um, doing immoral immoral things that are wrong that against god's um bible that he tells us that we should not do those things um so this was a really sad time this is when we see this really happening and then we have what's called the civil rights um continued and actually what is sad about that is martin luther king does get assassinated some of the civil rights continued was really good but some of it um of course wasn't there talked about Malcolm X who believed that um, he that you need to do it in the wrong way and actually later on he becomes part of the communist um, regime he leaves our country so actually he um, had the wrong ideas so that's why some of the civil rights kind of gotten got out of place um, and there was still some country some states that needed to um, see that it was wrong what their original law said. But thankfully that continued and we do have um, even Johnson elect some black people into his uh, government and so we see that happening. Okay, so that was the 1960s. Now we have in the 1970s, we have President Nixon who becomes president and he is president from 69 to 74. And then Ford, um, we know that Nixon actually resigns. We'll talk about that in, a couple, in the next video. But then Ford becomes um, 
president from 74 to 77 because he he because he resigns he becomes the new president and after him we have Jimmy Carter who is from 77 to 81 there it says that I don't have enough time because that's the bell and that means you're supposed to leave no I'm just teasing um, I am doing this at school and um, so we do have some familiar sounds of school hopefully here but we miss the sounds of you guys in the in the hallways and talking to you um, I can't wait till next fall when I see all of you I know you'll be in a different class but I will be so wonderful to see all you again okay sorry I shouldn't get sidetracked because I don't want to make this video too long but I um, I do miss you guys okay so we have the 1970s and we have what's called the new age environmentists um, we talked about how the new the environmentists came and that's when Earth Day was started to be celebrated. And I do believe that we should treat our Earth and conserve things. God wants us to do that. He wants us to take care of our Earth. He wants us to make sure that we are um, kind to our Earth, not have garbage all over the place and you know, treat it well. But it's not to be worshiped. And that's kind of where we see the difference between a new age environmentist. And because of that, with the respect of new, the, the Earth, being almost like a god, the respect for um, human life declines. And what do we have in the 1970s, sadly? 1972, we have a ruling against capital punishment that went in the Supreme Court. And what did that do? Almost every state of the nation then followed suit. And why was that so wrong? Well, what happened is then crime started to flourish because people were not afraid that they would be killed for their acts anymore or put to death because of what they had done and so capital punishment was taken away now you know capital punishment is not for every kind of wrong thing you do of course it's for the most hideous things and that is taking another human life but that there is still a couple states that still have capital punishment, but most states do not because of this ruling. And then we also talk about abortion. And we know that um, Roe versus Wade was in 1973. And sadly, that was when abortion started, where it was legal for a woman to decide if she wanted to keep, I guess, keep her baby or not. Um, in the wrong way. I mean, um, you know that I have two beautiful boys through adoption and um, I know there's people that you know. I know Maddie has two little siblings because of adoption. That is the right way of if for some reason a birth mother is is having a hard time, um, you know, and she can't keep her children herself because she feels like it, it would be detrimental to them. A, adoption is so much better. Of course, they get put in loving families and we can take care of them. And I love my two children. I know God gave them to me in a special way. Um, so just to let you know, you know, but abortion is murder. And um, that, that happened in 1973. Um, then we have government corruption. We'll talk about Nixon in a couple minutes here. Um, space travel started actually in the 1960, 1969. Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. I think they had a picture of that. One small step um, for mankind. It's one large step for mankind actually. Um, that he stepped, he took one step on to the moon. Um, and then we talked about what happened here because of the decline here of um, with the hippies and the decline in morality, we see also decline in economic problems, and we'll get to that later also, okay? All right, then the 19, from 1981 to 1989, we have Ronald Reagan, and um, this is when we see a surge back into um, morality that is a good thing. So there's some things we talked about before, and those are in yellow. I think there, some of these are on your thing, so... You don't have to worry about that, but those are some things we just talked about. But in the 1980s, what happened? We have a renewal to traditional values of Americanism and Christianity. Um, that happened. Ronald Reagan really set the bar high that he wanted um, morality back into our schools, back into America. And also patriot patriotism was at a very strong high, and that was a conservative movement. 
um, new technology. Of course, the computer age happened in the 70s and 80s. 85, I think, is where they really saw the, um, the computer age start. Oh, there's the bell again. <laughs> you can hear that. And then we had the end of the Russian um, com communism, which is awesome. This, it was because Ronald Reagan was very strong in his belief that men and women should be free, and he saw the horrors, horrors, I'm sorry, and the destruction of what communists did, that he stuck to his guns, and at the end, he, there's even a video, I, I wish we could watch more things, I wish we could do that, but he even says, um, to Gorbachev, who actually was the, um, who actually was the leading, um, the premier, I guess, of Soviet Union at that time, he says to him, "Mr. Gorbachev, take down that wall." And he's talking about the wall of east of the wall that they call the Iron Curtain, the wall that would separate Berlin, um, West Berlin, from East Berlin take away communism, and thankfully communism did fall in the 1980s, okay? All right, I'm going to stop the, here, and we're gonna get back um, to the next part. So um, this is up to you. If you want to stop for today and watch this other video, um, it will be on, of course, it's on our channel here at school, but you could watch it, like I said, on Wednesday because I think you only have like two or three pages to read. It's real light reading and there's only a couple of questions. You might want to do the other one then. Or if you wanted to get it all done now, you can. Um, so I'm going to stop it right now.